Hey everyone, it's Diane Evans here with StampinWithDiane.com. I'm an independent Canadian Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the interior of British Columbia. So if this is one of your first times joining me, welcome. Remember that if you're joining me through YouTube, subscribe just down below here. And if you're on my Facebook group, you just need to give StreamYard permission. This is all part of a live presentation. So because it is live, I will be talking with different people as they join me. But in any event, it's Technique Tuesday. How did they do that? Um, and honestly, this one is one that I actually had and I really wanted to do for, um, oh, and I got a tickle in my throat. <coughs> um, this is one that I wanted to do um, before Christmas and I had a certain um, stamp set in and embossing folder thought of, but it didn't it just didn't happen because of all the issues that I was having with um, my Zoom. In any event, let's go on down to my desktop here. This way it'll give me a chance to have a bit of a drink. <coughs> oh my goodness. Hi, Pam and Kay and Cynthia. Hi, Ina and Lila and Dolly. Felicia, Judy. I tell you guys, I really do appreciate you do coming on here. So this is technique number 87. So this will be posted tomorrow with the picture and everything else. It'll be posted on my Facebook group. The link to my group is down below if you watch me through YouTube. Uh, that's really good, um, Cynthia. Cynthia is saying that she's um, she's being addicted to the dogwood um, free celebration. I've got it. I haven't used it yet. But in any event, let's go back to this one. Um, so we're going to be embossing on acetate. And it really does have a bit of a technique to it. But I think i am added something to it so that it shows up better because it honestly doesn't show up how I thought it was going to show up. So I've added a lot of different things that I'm actually doing to this particular one. Um, you can use this acetate or window sheets that you find in the photopolymer stamp sets. There's a thicker one. This is like our window sheets. You might have, and this one's a little bit harder, but it still can work. There's one part of the process that just makes it a tiny bit harder. Or there's a thinner acetate that comes in on top of all these stamps. So if you're like an awful lot of people where they don't throw their acetate out, then that's that's fine. You can use either either. I don't put my stamps on the inside here until I use them. I don't know. It's just something silly that I do. So um, but I've got acetate and we're going to use the acetate and we're all, also, you need to use a 3D embossing folder. And of course I'm using these layered flowers again. I love this. This is the new, um, new embossing folder, um, from the new mini, right? Hi Marge and hello, Laura. All right. So I'm going to show you this now. Your scoreboard, if you have a scoreboard, is going to be your friend with this particular thing that I'm going to show you how to do. But you can also use um, your your paper trimmer. But I strongly suggest that you use the stylus um, on from there because you need a better crease with it because it's the acetate that you're working with. So let me go ahead and let's get started on this. Now, what you're going to need, like I say, is that piece of acetate. Now, I am going to, I want this piece of acetate, I want it to be four and a quarter by, um, no, I want it to be four inches by five and a quarter. So I have gone ahead and I've cut my acetate four inches by five and three quarters. And you'll find, um, you'll find that, this is going to work quite well with it. Um, attaching acetate onto, and I'm going to do it onto a piece of cardstock. Like I say, I've done this different ways and I'll show you some of the, what's happened with them and they just didn't turn out as well. And then as I was playing with it, I came up with this other way of doing it. Okay, so this is, like I say, it's four inches by five and three quarters. I went ahead and I scored at a quarter of an inch. So I have this 
good and scored at a quarter of an inch. And then I went and I am going to actually use my cardstock as a base. And I am going to, um, and this piece of cardstock is four inches by five and a quarter. And then I went here and I'll show you what I did. I measured it up and then I went in with my scoring tool and you need the little tiny fine one and just lined that up there and just went down and got a really good score. And like I say, this is one of those, um, because it's so much thicker, you've got to keep scoring it. And that's why I like using the scoreboard with it. Um, but you can use it, like I say, as long as you've got using a stylus and not the, um, the scoring blade. It's just not dark in, or deep enough. And then what I did was I came with my bone folder and I made sure that this was good and creased along there. And this is so important that this part is creased. Um, I just about uncreased that right there. And see how this kind of just slides right in and out of there. And you'll find by doing it this way, this is going to work a lot better for you. Now, I want to make sure that that's on there really, really good. So this is how I'm going to do this. I'm coming on with my tear and tape. I know I've got some here. And I'm just going to take this tear and tape and I am going to line it right up to the edge there. And I know you guys have seen this trick. Let me just move the instructions where I just come in with credit card, a gift card, just put it there and tear it off. And that gives me a nice even edge. Hello, Marilyn. Yes, this is such a nice deep one. And hello, Rabina. Okay, so we're just gonna line that right up to there. And again, like I say, I'm coming in with that. Um, it's my Timmy gift card, it's empty, but okay. So now this is how I'm going to attach it and it's going to work so much better. Awesome, thanks Cindy. All right, so then I just need my take your pick tool. And I'm just going to take this like this and take this piece off. And then let's just get that right in there. Get it right up to the edge. And then I'm just going to, whoops, did I get that right even? And pay attention to that side. That wasn't very good. I do want that even, so I'm just going to take that off. Oh, shoot. Take that off very carefully. There we go. You know what? That's going to come off like that, so we're just going to go do it again. No worries. It's stuck to me. So what not to do, right? You want to make sure it's even. So check it before you go and you put it down. Let's do that again. All right. Let's take that off again. Oh, thanks, Cindy. Really appreciate you sharing my video. Yeah, if you like this, make sure you go in, share my video. That is a huge compliment. Okay. All right, so again, I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna slide that right in there and I'm gonna make sure it's even on both sides, just like that, pull that down and then we're just gonna use that just like that. And see, by doing it onto your cardstock here, you're going to see that it's going to show up a lot more. Then on this part here, I'm just gonna take this off this is probably the hardest part of this whole technique by getting it in there. And then I'm just going to take this, slide it in there, make sure it's even. Okay. 
see I did that again. Anyways, we're just I'm going to show you how this works. All right, so we have this, and then what we're going to do is now we're going to go in and emboss this. Now, it looks great when it's just embossed, just like this. However, we want it to show up, right? So this is when I'm going to come in with this, and I'm going to use the non-Stampin' Up! side. So when it goes into the embossed edge, what it does is it dints down and it gives some really neat looks on there. So I'm going to take my brayer and I'm going to take my Whisper White. Remember when you do get Whisper White, um, the new Whisper White, it comes with, and this is an old reinker, but it comes with a reinker because it's uninked when you get it. So, but I'm going to use my old craft ink. And I'm just going to come in with my brayer. And remember, this is the, the way it stands. I want to turn it over. And all I'm going to do is roll and lift, roll and lift. We want to get this good and inked up with this crafting. So just lift and roll. Now the other day too, I shared that you could use your your brayer to re help re-ink your stamp pads. Okay, so like I say, I'm coming on and I'm doing it on the non Stampin' Up! one. And I'm just going to go ahead and just put this right on here. Now, a lot of people have asked me, doesn't that ruin your um, brayer? No, it takes a little bit longer for this to dry. And we're going to have to worry about that when we go on. So I can wash this off with just water. And it'll also come off the brayer because I tested it. Okay, so we have that. I'm going to move this completely out of the way. And then I'm going to come in and put this piece down onto here. Just like this. And now what I want to do is run this through with my emboss, my cut and emboss. So just bring that in. Remember you're going to use your number one layer and your number four plate. Okay. And I tried to get my thing so it was up a little bit higher, but my stand keeps moving on me. Now you want to run this through with the folded edge through. Put this number four on top. And then, of course, we want to make sure that this is in the middle. If you force this through, it just means that you, you've got it going off to the edge. So we're just going to run that through. There we go. And we'll just bring that out. And then, just going to take this off. And this is, I call it the magic of it. So like I say, coming in on this side, and now what we're doing is this piece here has got this inked up on there. So I also have this where I had done it without that, that um, cardstock in, and it got quite messy in there. So I kind of liked it where it was in here like this and then this isn't as tight as what it was supposed to be so i'm just going to go in and actually i want to get it good and tight now this is quite um wet still so i'm just gonna crease that down and then what i could do too and i want to show you you could also do it with the designer series paper. So I went ahead and also did it on the designer series paper. And you can see that, I think with the light, it kind of takes it away and you can't really see it. 
All right. So then, and of course, we want to wash this off. We want to wash our other stuff off. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go and finish the card. So it really adds a different kind of a texture. Now, if you want, if it's still popping up just a tiny bit, you can come in with your glue dots and we can hide these spots where these are. So I'm going to do that. Just put it just down there. This one is a little bit drier. So that's the reason why I'm going to use this one because this piece here has to now dry because if it doesn't dry, what's going to happen is it's going to, um, it's, it, it's going to get all over the place we're gonna, and we're going to have a heck of a mess. So just coming in, just getting some more of these glue dots on here. So like I say, you can emboss an awful lot of different things. I've shown embossing on napkins is really kind of a cool idea. You can emboss, like I say, on this acetate. You can emboss like we used to have um, acetate boxes and you used to be able to emboss on there. But I think it's kind of neat that you can do it with that particular um, um that you can emboss it with the ink on there, which you could do normally. All right, so I have a piece of just basic white. It happens to be uh, five and a half by 11, scored at four and a quarter. This basic white, because it's a card base, I'd use the thick basic white. And we're just gonna put that like that. And then we're going to attach this right onto the front here. Now I could have gone a bigger border, but I didn't. And then I'm going to also go and I'm going to use the tear and tape on these pieces as well. And I've shown you before how to use this tear and tape when you go to put it on because sometimes it really causes a lot of problems. So I'll just show you that quick trip again. Like I say, I wouldn't be able to do this because it would have been all over my my base there. And it's kind of nice with the, the designer series paper right underneath it. This one didn't get stuck as much right underneath here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just stick that down there. Oopsie. There we go. There we go. All right, so when I go to use um, tear and tape, when I go to put it on the front of a card, this is the way I do it. Is I just take a tiny bit of it off because you know once it's down, it's down, right? Uh, Cindy, you asked me how I come up with these ideas. Um, honestly, I might have seen something that I liked before. I really, I did a card years ago using um, a window sheet and white craft ink. And I did embossing with snowflakes on it. But I really wanted to show how to do um, ones. A lot of times they're ones that I had done years and years and years ago. So we're going to put this on here. Just like there, whoops, see what I mean? You don't want it on there completely because we want to get that centered. Um, it is getting more difficult to come up with I different techniques. And the reason being for that, see, I'm just gonna tear this piece off there, tear this piece off here, do this off. And then this one off as well. And then we've got that so it's on there. Awesome, Lala. Watch it later, you bet. Okay, then, like I say, the card is not really the part that we're going to worry about. Um, I had lost my postage dies. Um, and I borrowed these from Laura, Laura, so thank you very much. And I'm going to use, they go along with this stamp set. So I wanted to use 
I'm going to use gorgeous grape on there. And hmm, the expression I wanted was, you're simply marvelous. Now I can't find, I don't, it's not in there. And then I thought I also had one already stamped. I might have one. Well, I can't find the stamp. Surprise, surprise. So I actually had done this before. So I want to put that on there. This is quite a shiny card, so we might want to tone it down a little bit. I'm not sure. So what I have here is I have a bunch of different die cuts. Oh, my goodness. How can you lose something like that? There they are. I have a bunch of die cuts that I did cut from the lavender. And, you know, somebody went and said to me, oh, you're mixing... Um, different flowers with um, your perennial, your lavender. Um, I don't know about you, but my garden doesn't have just one lot of flowers in different spots. Mine are all over the place. So I'm sorry <laughs> to disappoint in that aspect. So, all right, this is a leaf, but I wanted some white in there as well. So I'm gonna kind of put this over behind here and we're gonna just build up this garden. And I'm going to call it a garden because that's what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is I am going to stick a dimension on this side and one on that side. And then I can stick all those other ones down on there. Oh, how to ink the pad. Um, I can definitely show you that. Um, I can definitely show that to you. No, Lorraine, my dyes have not shown up. Now, another thing that you've got to remember, this is quite a slippery surface. So using glue, it could slip. So I use, like I say, tear and tape on there. Dimensionals are going to work. I'm going to use some glue dots on here as well. Um, so we're going to use a mixture of things except for the glue. Um, yeah, no, my postage dies haven't shown up yet. They will. Um, I just ordered another set yesterday. But I borrowed these, so. All right, so let's just go ahead, put that there. Um, we've got some of these ones. And I cut this out of the, the same designer series paper. And we're going to give it a haircut after. Yeah, I thought it was kind of nice. And it, it's a different way to use your embossing folders, right? So like I say, we're going to build our garden up. Oh my goodness, where my lavender grows, it's with everything. Lavender keeps, I think it keeps the mosquitoes away. So I've got some by my patio. and um, Let's stick this down here as well. Hmm, maybe not. I do have some more white, just to give a bit more stuff on there. There we go. And let's put one more of these on there. And then of course we can cut this one off. Well, maybe we could cut this one off. We might just tear it off. The white is is thick, um, Rabina. You can um, you can water it down a tiny bit, um, but um, try to put it on as thick as it is. Um, I sometimes have used the back of a spoon and rubbed it through, but I was just saying earlier that I think the brayer will be a great way to do that as well. So, like I say, when I take a spoon and then I just rub it like this and then you of course you store your your um, stamp pads down this just needs a tiny bit of a trim here you store your stamp pads down facing down and that's what this is these are always face down so that'll help 
and you can't really use it right away. All right, so this is just going to go here. You're simply marvelous. And then they also have in this suite, they have these really nice butterflies. Now, some of them are huge. Um, I can see me going through the little ones a lot quicker than the big ones. Uh, let's see. You get 40 different butterflies in here. But see, these ones are just too big. Just way too big. Um, that definitely is for another way. So I'm just going to use this butterfly. And it's a laser cut. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to use a blending brush. I'm going to use some Highland Heather in here. Yes, of course, Felicia. They are a bouquet of... Uh, you know, I never used to be a purple person, but I'm sure starting to be a purple person. So, I don't know what side to do this on. I think it's this side. So, of course, we, you know, I think maybe we need a bit of gorgeous wing. And then I will have two sets. Yes, Laura, I will have two sets, which would be nice if you're using it for a class. There we go, just like that. That can go right there. Just like that. And you know what? I am going to come and just clean this part off of here. And like I say, I use my stamping mist. I have an old bottle. I'm really bad. And then I just keep pouring it into the other one. But Stampin' Mist right on your mat works great. And it dries so quickly too. All right, let's get this on there. Oh, you know what? I think I need some blue dots over here. So let's come with some blue dots. You say when you do it with this embossing, you do not see these glue dots behind there. There. All right, so let's go and put that. So we're going to glue dot that one too. Boy, I could go through a lot of glue dots. Just squishing it up, put it on the body part. like that. So I'll we'll just, thank you. Um, a lot of people, Ravina, use their bone folder to do it too. I don't. Um, just go ahead and re just try doing it again and you'll be surprised at probably how well it'll work. All right, I've got a bunch of these. There's like, I think this is Highland Heather. This is um, Blackberry Bliss. It also goes really good with Moody Mauve. And I think I'll put the Highland Heather ones on here. And I was even going to, oh, you're not even going to see those. I was even going to put... Um, um, a ribbon on here, but I don't think it needs it. You know what? I'm going to put this here. I'm going to switch this up down here. I'm going to just let me put that like that. So I'm just going to put this here. Thank you, Sandra. To say, and if you have any techniques that you'd like me to do for you, I would be more than happy. I don't like that there. I'd be more than happy to do it for you. Um, and if I've already done it, I'll just do a variation of it so that it goes on there. Remember, my technique will have a picture of this card down at the bottom down here. It will also um, have the measurements that I used and the different um, 
product that I used. Um, I, I'm not, I can list the window sheet is what I will do, or I'll put the acetate from the inside of your photopolymer stamp set. But see how that just, it, it really um, works well on there. Now, it didn't show up so much on there, but let me kind of show you on this one. And maybe I should have done a blue flower, but see how that works on there. So I'm just saying that it, it, it just works different on different, um, the different backgrounds. So I might even put a picture of this paper piecing. Okay. I could do something with that. I don't think it needs ribbon either, Laura. I don't think it does at all. So like I say, that gives you a different um, kind of look, what to do with that, those pieces of acetate on there. So I hope you enjoyed that. Awesome. So let's see what's going on. Thanks very much for joining me. I really do appreciate that. Remember, give me the thumbs up, share my video. I really do appreciate it. Also, um, if you do live in Canada and don't have a demonstrator that you're working with, I would love to work with you. Remember, um, uh, we have a lot of fun on my team. Um, there's a few of them already on here. I really do appreciate that. Paper piecing. Okay, I'm going to look at that. Yeah, the blue one's very pretty, but I just couldn't do blue um, lavender on there. I just couldn't do it. So, and I wanted to do the lavender, but that gives you a thing to look at. Thank you. Thanks, Barbara. All right. Um, so tomorrow, um, part of my now what um, series is um, part of my now what series. I'll be picking something from um, you my studio and show you different ways that maybe you um, might be able to use it. Um, if also, if there are things that you want to do, as long as it's a current product, I will show you how to use it. Um, if it's not current, I won't be, um, I probably won't use it. Um, that's why there's some techniques that I can't do because I'm just waiting for a certain product or there's a technique I'm waiting for a certain stamp set. So um, I have it sort of visualized in my head. Awesome. So remember to create because it's great for the soul. And we will talk to you soon. We'll see you tomorrow at 415 Pacific time. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm way ahead of myself. It's Mystery Wednesday tomorrow. So it'll be at three o'clock Pacific time. Don't have any training um, this week, but I think there's training the week after. So, um, but anyways, um, yeah. Um, I will let you know on that. So three o'clock tomorrow with mystery challenge. I'll post the mysteries, uh, the clues around 12 o'clock tomorrow. Boy, I tell you, I'm way ahead of myself and I really, I can't afford to lose any more time. So, all right. Well, thanks so much. Have a great evening and we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.